I hope everybody had a wonderful Shabbos. Yesterday was the Yerte of Rav Nachum Mendel Schneerson, otherwise known as the Lubavitcher Rebbe. The Rebbe led a very large and vibrant Lubavitch movement, but there were some rabbinic leaders that weren't fond of his practices, of his methods of leadership, and his approach to Judaism. One particular Rav unloaded a very negative, heavy rhetoric against the Rebbe. Later, that same Rav made Aliyah to Eretz Yisrael and started a community. However, he hit financial hardship that almost forced him to move back to America. On one of his last days in Eretz Yisrael, there was a knock on his door, and the visitor announced himself as a messenger from the Lubavitcher Rebbe. The Rebbe felt that this Rav should focus on leading his congregation, teaching Torah to the Jewish people, and making Kiddush Hashem, that was his role in the world. And the Rebbe would undertake all the financial burden that this Rav would have. Because the Rebbe knew that his role in life and the role of a Jew is not to fan the flames of machlokas and of argument, but rather to make sure that everybody, every other Jew is successful in the missions that they need to accomplish in life. This is very relevant to this week's Parsha. Korach, Dasan, and Aviram and their crew argued with Moshe Rabbeinu. In the beginning of this week's Parsha, so Moshe divides Korach from Dasan and Aviram. First he speaks to Korach, and then he addresses Dasan and Aviram. On the one hand, this can be a classic divide and conquer technique that is much easier to win an argument against one person or a few people than it is to win against a mob. However, if one analyzes the reasons why each combatant was arguing with Moshe, so we find perhaps another reason why Moshe split Korach and Dustin and Aviram. Korach's argument was based on logic. Korach felt that according to halachic principles, he or somebody from his family should have been appointed the Nasi for Kahas. Moshe had already taken two portions of Kahas privilege for the children of Amram, who was the firstborn of Kahas. And the next in line was Yitzhar, who was Korach's father. So Korach should have been appointed, or somebody from Korach's family should have been appointed, Nasi for Kahas. However, this argument is not relevant to Dustin Aviram. They were from Shevet Ruvain. So what were they doing involved in Korach's argument? So especially in light of what happens in Parsha's Akev, we could answer this question and learn a critical lesson about life. In Parakit Aleph and Sefer Dvarim, the Torah tells us about different people that Hashem had to take care of. One of them were the Egyptians. The Torah tells us, the miracles that Hashem did in order to defeat Paro and Omitrayim. And for those, for those who disagreed with Hashem in the Midbar, Hashem had to take care of them as well. The next Pasuk reads, the name that's missing in Parsha Zekev is Korach. Sefer Tzvarim in general is a review of what happened in the first four books of the Torah. So here in this Pasuk that is going over the story that happened in this week's Parsha, Parsha's Korach, there's no mention of Korach, there's only mention of Dustin and Aviram. Why is that? So it could be that in life we might look at different things that happen and make a decision based on what we think should be right or wrong. This may or may not be in line with what Hashem declares, but at least the reason for the disagreement stems from what we feel or what we deduce or what we conclude is the proper way to go. When it came to Dustin and Aviram, there was no logical or thoughtful argument. They couldn't have been the Nasi of Shevet Kahas. They were from Shevet Ruvain. So what were they doing? So they were perhaps just rabble-rousers. 
they saw Machlokas, they saw the flames of argument, and they hopped on board and said, wow, that's exciting, we want to be part of that. And maybe that's why it's Sefer Devarim. The Torah singles out Dustin and Aviram for negative PR. Because their argument wasn't based on something that they felt was deserving to them. Their argument wasn't based on the fact that they felt that their their honor was slighted. It was just solely for the sake of arguing. And the Torah is telling us that when it comes to the Jewish people, as the movie Miracle said so many years ago, the name on the front of the jersey is more important than the name on the back of the jersey. Is that we need to realize to get to the point of Bayamahu Yashana Khadish Mawahad that we all need to be on the same team. We need to cool down arguments and certainly not to hop on somebody else's argument. Yir Tsum of Nevinishabashimayam Akarish Barhu should help us to always have a peaceful line in our heart so that we could express our brotherhood and through that see the ultimate redemption.